Business Brain, episode 432 for Friday, March 17th, St. Patrick's Day, 2023. Greetings, folks, and welcome to Business Brain, the show by four and about business owners, about, about entrepreneurs, those of us that like to use our business brains in all aspects of our life, we collect here once or twice a week. Lately, it's been twice. This is great. This week, not only are we here on St. Patrick's Day, the last episode was on the Ides of March. I don't know what's going on this week. Sponsors for this episode are uh, include Headspace, where you can go to headspace.com slash brain30, brain30. Why? Because you get to try Headspace free for 30 days at that link. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Still here in Austin, Texas, I am Dave Hamilton. Out in Lafayette, California, in the middle of another atmospheric river, I'm Shannon Jean. <laughs> Yeah, crazy out here right yeah, now, you've man. got a lot I going love on. It. I love they brand the storms now. You know, on the on the East Coast, they name the you know the hurricanes or whatever it is. We don't have that out here, so now we have to. We oh, have you don't get hurricanes. Storms, you you know? don't get tropical storms or hurricanes no, out there. Nothing oh. like ah. Uh, we have like atmospheric rivers. Another term they came this year is a bomb cyclone, which oh. is another branded uh, uh, storm kind of thing. And you know, you love the media, so they have to. Yeah, yeah so it's kind of interesting. But, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, emergencies and and constant crisis uh, that we seem to be in a, a lot. Um, and I think today is interesting. We're going to talk about cash flow, which could be a crisis or it could be an opportunity, right? It, it, it could. Look, yeah. You know. We yeah. got We got an way. email from uh, listener Robert into feedback at businessbrain.show. And, and I will preface this by saying I love emails like this because it's so easy for those of us that have been sort of in the weeds for perhaps too long to take things for granted definitions of things. Uh, but it, it is good for all of us experts. And I don't even want to say we're experts, experienced no. people, <laughs> people yeah, have been doing sense. it for too long. People who have just started out. It's good for all of us to take a moment and look at what these things, these terms that we talk about mean and Robert emailed feedback at businessbrain.show and asked, when I hear businesses, business owners talk about cash flow, I'm not really certain what they mean. I think I have a general idea, but could you expand on this? Also, how does someone increase their cash flow? This seems to be the number one complaint with my non-paying customers. And Robert's got another question. I don't know if we'll get to it today, but we'll get to it another time about what to do about those non-paying customers. So um, I, I'm happy to to start here, Shannon, uh, but I, I really am looking forward to this as a conversation. Yeah. For, for me, cash flow is how much cash is actually arriving at my bank accounts each month or week versus how much is leaving each month or week. And it's for this reason that I, I love the advice that my father-in-law, who has a great business brain, uh, he gave me early, early on, and he says, I manage to cash flow first, then I worry about profits. And that has stuck with me. I know I've shared that advice on the show here. I don't know if I've, I've attributed it to Steve uh, or not, but but he definitely was the, the first person I encountered who said that. I've, I've encountered many other people who have said that too. And the reason is you can wrangle your profit and loss statement, your P&L, to make it look positive. But if you don't have any money in the bank, you are out <laughs> of trouble. business, right? Yeah. We talked about that at the end of the last episode. You know, you need your payroll money. You need the, the cash to move the business forward. And similarly, you can be losing money on your profit and loss statement on your P&L. But if you've got enough runway, a.k.a. cash, and that runway can come from initial investment, cash infusion, loans or more, you can bankroll your business to success sometimes. Um, yeah, w w Wikipedia describes cash flow a few ways, but I, I think the one that applies to what we talk about here is this: it is, however popular they say, to use cash flow in a in in the sense describing symbolic payments into or out of a business project or financial product. And I, I like that definition. It is sure. a simple thing because 
the specifics of cash flow, and I want to talk about some of those, but the specifics of it will mean different things for different businesses. Even, it, it, you know, even me running, and I'm sure this is true for you, Shannon, running multiple businesses that are different types of entities. And I don't just mean different types of like LLC versus C Corp, but just the, a different nature of the business. Cash flow means different things at those, you know, you, you might have a business without employees. And so your cash flow needs and picture and management of it are very different. Very different. Yeah. 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 Like it may be that it's, it's okay. I, I, I know I'm going to get paid, but, or I'm, this money's coming in, but the timing of it isn't as critical if versus if you've got, you know, 10 or 20 employees that you've you're you're managing to or other bills that are coming up and and that that cash flow you know it, it, it's it the money in and out it, it, and you should be a pre- equally as important is understanding also a, a cash flow statement is being able to sit down uh and and do that uh and and figure out what your flow is going to be over a time period and, and yeah. i certainly want to talk more about that you know, we talk here a lot on the show about self-awareness and learning about ourselves and, and how that applies to our business brains so that we can have the proper perspective on stuff. And it's so easy to get caught up in doing things that we're not thinking about things. And, and that's not just true about business. It's true about our lives in general, taking a minute to chill and focus and sort of let our thoughts process and go is super helpful. And Headspace, our sponsor here, helps that happen in a fantastic way through guided meditations, mindfulness practices, breathing and calming exercises, and so much more. The Headspace tools can help reduce anxiety, they can help boost your mood, and help you sleep better. Headspace combines scientifically proven benefits of meditation and mindfulness with modern practices through their experienced meditation teachers. Headspace has stuff for no matter what you need. If you want like a quick on the go meditation for a few minutes, like they've got like a three minute meditation. Uh, They've also got much longer meditations. Their teachers are all, they're all great. I I mean, I have, you know, some that I, I kind of gravitate to when I use it, but everyone that I've tried is has brought me something. They've got the world's largest library of content with over a thousand hours of clinically proven mental health exercises. Headspace has definitely helped me and more than a hundred million people worldwide, and they can help you too. Listen up. You do not want to miss this because we've arranged something special here for a limited time. All of you can try Headspace free for 30 days by going to headspace.com slash brain 30 for 30 days. You won't find this offer anywhere else. You must use our link H E A D S P A C E dot com slash brain 30 to unlock all of headspace free for 30 days. This is not something they normally do headspace.com slash brain 30 and our thanks to headspace for doing what they do and for sponsoring this episode. All right. But you, you know what I love about that ad is as you started it, you then, because headspace is so important to kind of calm down and be self-aware and you, you slow down <laughs> and talked it through and, and that we should do a whole show on that because we're all about action, action, action and, and accountability and go, 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 go. Don't, don't wait, don't wait. But Sometimes you just have to chill and take a break and it would be a good episode. It is good to chill. Yeah. 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 I, I think yeah. I, I agree. It, yeah, we we, we have to chill sometimes. Yes, I, we do. It's we the do. way we let our, I always think about my chill time as the time where my brain like gets to percolate in the background Yep, and yep. a lot of good thoughts come out of that. So yeah, no, it, it's good we've for talked our about business it. brains. Yeah, yeah. We've talked about it like on, when driving. Uh, for instance, yes. And oftentimes, when I'm driving, certain times of the year when I, I do a lot of driving and I'm going someplace during hunting season, I'm driving up to the Duck Club, and I I find myself, you know, no other noise, just kind of getting on autopilot, but thinking, yeah. And, it, and stuff happens, really, really good stuff. It's like being in a shower, right? Things. It's the, yeah. I, I, um, what what I I like about meditation, especially guided meditation, uh, is that it forces me to not think in those moments. And and that's yes. the difference yeah. is 
you know, actually letting the thoughts sort of go as opposed yeah. to letting them process it, 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 it changes things and, and it's yeah, helpful. Let, let, let's anyway. do an episode next week yeah. on, on when to slow down or yeah. when to let your thinking process. I think yeah. that's a great idea, yeah, yeah. but I do want to talk about things that you do have to take action on it. And one of the things, you know, cash flow is really important. I mean, critical. It's the lifeblood of your business. If you don't manage it well, you, you just see it over and over and over when even huge companies where they're like, wow, we, we need to go out and raise another, you know, X hundreds of millions of dollars or billions of dollars because their cash flow is in trouble. Yeah. And, and you, two things about that uh, before I we jump into the cash flow statement is that if you're constantly having problems, it's a huge indicator that there's systemic issues with your business, if problems with cash. It could be that, you know, you've let your expenses get out of hand. You know, I always used to joke that for my managers, uh, the number one solution to a manager was to hire someone else, right? Yeah. Uh, we can't get this done in time. We can't do this. We can't handle this. These are problems. Da, 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 da. Let's hire somebody else. And when you hear in the news, like, you know, Facebook just laying off another 10,000 people, uh, this week after, you know, 10,000, you know, last month or something that happens everywhere. And so you need to look, and it's not just people, although those people are very, very expensive. It, yes. it could be you you've expanded your facility too quick. You bought this stuff, you committed to doing something. I've been there with all of this stuff. So the cash flow is like the first indicator you need to look at. Is it, is it a short-term issue or is it something systemic in my business that I need to change? Did I have a whole product line you know, fall off and is not selling anymore. And we need to modify that if you're in the product business or yeah. if you're in a serv service business, it's like, wow, one of our most profitable services is no longer being booked by people. Why is, is, is it just not needed anymore? Did somebody else come in and undercut you? But that that's the, the, the top level indicator and your cash flow statements, you know, when things are good, you can cash flow 30 days, 60 days. Yeah, we sit down and we talk about it. Things are going great and we're projecting out. But, you know, there's been times in businesses that I've owned that, I mean, we I would meet weekly and do cash flow. State, you know, hey, oh, yeah. what's coming in this week? Even daily. Okay, who are we going to do this? And you have to start thinking, wh why? You know, money's tight. Yeah. Why? And, and why? can you, and, and also managing to who's the most important person to pay? Right. Yeah. You pay, you got to pay your employees first before you, before everybody, you know, you got to keep the lights on, you know, you can get a lot of leeway with the power company. You got to pay, you know, insurance, but, uh, y you know, you got to pay who matters first and most important things. And again, I'll, I'll talk, I talked about it in the banking uh, episode earlier this week is communication. If, especially if it's a macro issue, like right now where the economy's, you know, kind of pretty bumpy and you're having problems, you got to call and talk to your suppliers if you can't pay them or if you have to short pay them or pay them late. That is that they, is one of the best pieces. I want I just want to yeah, stop and yeah. shine a light on that. That is one of the best pieces of advice that I, we have shared in our 8 years of doing the show. Happy anniversary by the way. We we hit yes, that last month. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh we uh it, it like if you are having trouble paying someone, call them. And yeah. if you need more assurance that that is the right thing. Flip it the other way. We're going to do the collections show, but yes, uh, if, if, if you are owed money by someone, wouldn't you rather hear from them and have a conversation with them about how to deal with that? That's yeah. that. Th so, so call them. I know it's, yes. it's not a, a converse, it's a conversation that it's, involves it sucks. you. It sucks. Yes. Yeah, it sucks. It sucks. But if <laughs> no that's the no scenario, that's the scenario. So just call yes. them and tell them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I and calling is really the way to do it if you can. Email yeah. is not good. No, uh, you know it's too flat. No, texting, of course, no. You know, get on the phone and explain it, especially if it's again this macroeconomic thing, which. Yeah. There, you're not alone. You're not the only one that's having these issues, If especially, you know, right now. Now, if, even if you made a big mistake and something happened or maybe you need to massage the, uh, you know, I've talked, I've used this uh, phrase before on the show, you know, managing the truth, right? Maybe you have to massage what's really going on and say, you know, wow, one of our best customers is having trouble and couldn't pay us. You know, that doesn't hurt anybody. And it, and it maybe allows you to save face a little bit more. Yep. If the reason why you're not calling is because you feel like oh, I made a mistake and I don't have any money. Yeah. Um, and so 
you got to talk to them, Par- partners, suppliers, you know, these people, they, they, you want them on your side, just like when we've talked about negotiating, you want them on your side of the table. They're your, they're with you on this. Yeah. And maybe you can't, you know, if you own $10,000, you say, look, I can only send you 3000, uh, or whatever and work even the rent. I mean, in 2008, 2009, uh, with, our business, you know, one of our companies, the, the phones just stopped ringing. It was like somebody pulled the phone out of the wall. Oh. They, they just were done. And I couldn't, I was like, I don't understand. Everything just went in the toilet. And, you know, I, we couldn't even pay the rent because we had to pay our employees first. You have to keep these people. And, and we did some layoffs and we reduced some hours trying to lessen the pain. Sure. We, we, of course, were not getting paid. But even the landlord, when you called and... I had never spoken to these people ever. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I had used an agent and this kind of thing. But when I called them, they were just like, well, you know, you're not the only one having this problem. What can we do to make it work? And we we agreed on a on a payment schedule that we could meet. So instead of paying, you know, I don't know what the total was, but instead of paying 10 grand a month, I was like, hey, we're going to pay two grand a month for the next six months. But then after that, we're going to pay you 12 grand to make up or something. To catch it up, and, yeah. And, yeah, and those people will will be your partners if you communicate with them. If you don't, and they have to call you, oh, they're man. not as friendly. It's not as good. Right? No, be proactive. No. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. That, that's the number one thing, and that that cash flow statement is can help you here because if you sit down and you look, and all of a sudden you start to see like, wow, and and I like to base it on my historical stuff. You're like, well, how was last month? How, did it match my projected ca- a statement of cash flows and if it didn't why it was a close okay great okay yeah it's fine but yep. if it was off by a significant amount what's going on and are my customers paying me late you know is is what what's what's happening um so planning is critically important to manage your cash you know having some reserves and not touching it and keeping it emergency setting up that line of credit like we talked about last week on the banking show um I could talk about this stuff for a long time because I've been there. <laughs> yeah. When you're when you're stuck, it's miserable, and you you have to just keep moving and figuring out things to get you through it. And it could be anything. I mean, I can tell you, one of my companies was saved by a a, a high valued credit card that I didn't have to pay off for sixty days. You know, with no with no interest. Yeah, yeah. And and I'm always a I'm always super loyal to American Express because. You know, when you get to a certain level and they give you unlimited credit line on a credit card, you know, I could go spend 250 grand and on supplies I needed and then save that cash to pay for things for the next 30 days, make payroll and then and then pay them back. And if you needed more, you could make a phone call. But all those things were set up when when we were killing it and business was great and they are hungry for your business. So you have to plan in advance and build your army because the time is going to come when you're going to need it and you're going to have to fight. Um, so I really implore you to, to set that up in advance. I like it. Folks, thanks for hanging out with us. Folks, uh, make sure that Robert got entered into our contest for a MacBook Air this year because we featured his question here on the show today. You can send your questions into feedback at businessbrain.show. We would love to hear from you, even if it's just... A comment, a compliment, a criticism. If we share it on the show, you're included into that drawing. And we definitely want to hear from you. This this stuff is important to us because it makes us make the show you want to hear, which keeps you living that charmed life. We'll see you next week.